Yo, Hannah. Yo, Hannah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little while. This time of year is busy for everyone and it's been a little bit busy for me. So I'm sorry there's been a couple of weeks since I've published a video, but I'm really excited because today I have a junk journal with me. I have been filming some videos, but I haven't really had a chance to get them edited. So today I am doing this one, which is the most recent video that I filmed. And this is a journal with me about my daughter's birthday party and birthday. So over the weekend, we had a birthday party for her. She turned two, which is crazy, but I wanted to do a really fun journaling session with all of the photos that we had and any other bits of ephemera that I had from the party. Before I started journaling, I went through my stash of supplies and I pulled out anything that I felt went with um, the theme of her birthday party. We did like a little garden party, tea party in the backyard. So I pulled out anything that I felt was relative to that theme or anything that reminded me of her birthday or her or the party or anything that was sort of symbolic. And I just did that ahead of time so that I could have everything that I needed right in front of me on my desk and that sort of helps the whole process flow really well because you don't have to stop and start to pull out supplies everything's right there so i started out by choosing a page in my journal where i had a couple of pages that were blank so there was nothing to interrupt the spread because i knew that i wanted to do at least two full page spreads i did more than that in the end but i wanted it to all flow together and so I just picked a page where I had lots of room to keep going if I wanted to. And then I started out just by sort of building up the backgrounds of those pages. So the first bit of paper that I stuck down with the little florals came from a magazine and I've had that for so long. I've just been waiting for the perfect moment to use it. So I used that in the background of one of the pages. And then I also have some scrapbook paper that has teacups, which is obviously perfect for this theme. And then I have some wallpaper and stuff that I'm playing with just to sort of build up the backgrounds. On this first page, I decided to start out with the invitation from her birthday party and I stuck it down with double-sided tape so that it would be a pocket and I just made this invitation using a illustration from one of my favorite children's books and I just put the text in where the storybook words were before so um, I didn't really give out lots of invitations because it was literally just our family that came to celebrate so um, but you guys know that I love paper and I love stationery so I just had to make an invitation anyway and I just love how it looked and I love how it adds so much to this page spread as well. It sort of helps with the memory of this day. So again, I'm just building up the pages. I decided to put that teacup paper on the back of the other page and this just also helped give the pages more structure because I wanted to put more and more on them and I didn't want it to be too flimsy because I have some of that Tamoe River paper in this journal it's quite thin and so I'm kind of just building up the structure of that page by adding lots of papers to the backgrounds. This is a wallpaper pocket that I got from Moonside Parlor and also all those other wallpaper scraps you saw me playing with just before are also from Moonside Parlor. And I decided to stick this down with double sided tape as well so that it had two pockets and so that I could tuck lots of stuff into that page. So once I had a couple of pages sort of starting to come together with backgrounds, I pulled out my photos and the first thing I did was just put them into stacks of portrait and landscape uh, types of photos so that I could work with sort of what sizes would fit where and then I'm just looking through and I'm trying to, I guess I'm trying to decide which photos I really want to be focal on the pages and which ones I'm happy to tuck into pockets and to have a little bit hidden away. And I really wanted the first couple of photos that I used on the first page spread to sort of illustrate or help tell the story of the whole setting of the party. And so I wanted to choose a photo that really showed our whole little setup that we had. And before I stuck that photo down, I also took out one of my little vintage linen printables from my Etsy shop. And I like how this looks layered behind the photos, how it kind of makes the page look embroidered in a way because it has that embroidered flower. It just adds so much. I just can never get sick of using those vintage linen printables. 
And you'll see throughout my process, I use both a glue stick and uh, double-sided tape. It just depends on the finish of the paper that I'm using. If I'm using something that's more glossy, then I'll use double-sided tape. Or if I want to create a pocket, I'll use double-sided tape. But if I'm using paper that's quite matte or not too heavy or too thick, then I'll just use a glue stick. So I have this flashcard that says gathering or gatherings and I just trimmed it down a little bit so that it could tuck into that pocket without hanging out way too much. And I decided to stick a photo of everybody at the party on the back of that card and then that just tucks in behind the birthday party invitation there. And then these little cut apart words are from, I think they're from Carousel by Maggie Holmes. And I cut them up and I'm using them all across the whole spreads that I did. The first one says celebrate, which is perfect. And I felt like the color just really complemented uh, both sides of the page. So moving on to the next page now, I have this little piece, this is like a little journaling card piece from Graphic 45 and I really like the colours in this and it sort of just has a picture of I think kids with their toys, which I felt like was fitting for this because at the tea party we had all our teddies and our dollies out and it was just a really cute little scene so I felt like that was fitting and it has the days of the week along the top so I circled off Sunday because that was the day that we had her birthday party. And then I'm just choosing a photo to stick above that. I really love this little photo of Ren, who's our middle child, and he's just eating, I think he's eating a cupcake or something, and he ate so much food, he just got straight into it, and then he got a little bit of a tummy ache, but um, I just thought that was a really cute photo and a really cute little memory. So I'm just sticking that above, and I'm trying to still showcase some of that teacup paper in the back. I also have some of these paper doll outfits which I think are really cute. We all tried to wear like floral or frilly pretty little dresses and stuff like that to the tea party. So I felt like this paper doll dress was quite cute and sort of went along with I guess the all the attire that we wore to the party. So I stuck that on the first page as well. Now just looking through my photos again trying to choose which ones to work with next. I have these photos of my three kids all together which I love and I was just picking between the two of them because they were quite similar and I'm just layering it on top of a journaling on top of a journaling card that has little polka dots which I feel like looks very birthday party-ish and I used another one of those little cut apart words that said love you and I was able to use a glue stick to glue this straight down on top of that wallpaper because it wasn't too glossy to stick well. And then because the photo paper is quite thick, I decided to use double sided tape to stick it down and I just layered that on top of that journaling card just so that it has, it kind of helps pop it off the floral paper which is kind of busy in the background. And then I ended up gluing that love you piece just above the photo because there was a nice little space where it fit. Now you can see I have two pockets beside that that I want to fill with something and so I'm just going through all the pieces that I have here on my desk and I'm just playing around with ideas and because I wasn't sure I decided to start decorating the edge where it was a little bit plain. So at first I thought I might use this scrap of paper and then I thought I may as well just use some washi tape. So I ended up picking this washi tape that has like a cream and pink floral on it. And this is a William Morris tape that I got from Washi Wednesday. So I just stuck that down the edge of the page and then I just uh, sort of folded it over the side of the page. And I like how that complements everything as well. And then I thought maybe I could use one of these wallpaper pockets inside the pocket on the page. So I'm trying to decide which one I like the best. I ended up choosing this one but in the end I don't think it even stays in there in the end but for now it's in there I like how it looks I 
had these two little cut aparts from another Maggie Holmes paper pad and these this is like a page where it's got little book titles and so I picked two of them out that I thought looked really cute one was called Garden Girl I think and um, I decided to cut them down and make them like covers of little notebooks and stick them onto some white cardstock like a card so that they're like little proper little notebook covers and then my idea was that I could use those to put two photos inside each so they're a little bit smaller than three by four the book cover images so it had this white border which I wasn't too crazy about so I thought about making the notebook smaller as big as the actual cover images are just because I thought it would look better but I really wanted to be able to fit my photos in there without cutting them down so in the end I took some washi tape this is one of my favorite patterned washi tapes and I decided to use that around the edges where the white border is and I feel like the colors were just perfect and they kind of made it still look like it was a book um, I feel like it just improved it so much than having the white borders around it and so I did that for both of those and it kind of looks like a little set of little books which I think looks really cute And then, like I said, I wanted to put photos inside those. So I used one of them for portrait style photos, and then I used the other one for landscape photos. And I really like how they turned out. And I ended up sticking the photos down with double-sided tape again, just to make sure they were stuck quite well and it wasn't gonna warp or anything like that. And then because they were kind of thick, I decided to put one of those in the first pocket and then I put the other one behind that in the next pocket. And then I decided not to put anything else in those pockets, even though there was probably space to do so, just because I didn't want it to be too bulky and too heavy on that page. So now moving on to the next page, this page wasn't as birthday-ish, I guess, because it had that illustration, I kind of wanted to make it look a little bit more birthday themed. And so I put that birthday music paper paper bag behind that pocket, just so that it had something birthday related on that page. And then I'm taking out this paper. This is paper that came in a package I got from my friend Kaylee. And I felt like this pattern really went well with the tea party theme and it wasn't too thick or too bulky so it worked out really well and I just glued that down over the top of that to my river paper and I made it sort of drape over just a little bit onto the page beside it. And as I'm journaling I'm always looking back through what I've done if it's all a spread that I want to look like it goes together I always sort of flick back and forth to make sure that everything is matching in a way and on this page I decided to take that wallpaper pocket that I didn't get to use before and I stuck it down with double sided tape so that it could be a top loading pocket and so I put that along the bottom of the page there and that gave me another two little pocket spaces so I took that scrap of ledger paper that was originally in the page beside that and I tucked that in as a journaling place and then I put one of my other photos in in front of that Now on the page beside that there's a little tuck spot along the bottom where I thought I could put a, another photo from the party and I decided to put it first on top of a little cream coin envelope and so I'm just deciding which photo to put. I really like this photo of me and my daughter. I don't often get photos of me and my kids together, especially ones that I like. I don't know, it's just like kind of rare to get a photo that you love. So I decided to use this little envelope as like a mum and daughter little photo mat, I guess. So I put a photo of us together on the front and then I put the other photo I had of us inside. And I just feel like because I feel like those photos would have been too repetitive to have both out on display. So I feel like tucking one of them into the envelope worked really well. I put that other little piece that said best day along the bottom and moved onto the page behind that. 
So now because I've got a picture of everyone, I wanted to put this last picture of my other son who didn't really have a photo yet. And so I decided to put him here on this last page. And I'm tucking this watermelon tag behind because my son absolutely loves watermelon, like cannot get enough of it. And we had watermelon at the party, so I layered that behind. And then I put that last little piece that said happiness just below that. And then playing around with the page beside that, I have this vintage, it was actually an invitation and it has the little mice having a tea party, which obviously again is perfect. So I really, really wanted to use that somewhere and I decided to make it sort of the focal point of this last page that I'm filling in. All the extra photos that I had, I tucked into that uh, music paper, paper bag that was on the previous page. And then I decided to try and work out how I could make this all come together. I had this little tag from the gift she got from us for her birthday, which was a little tin tea set. And I also tucked that into the music paper bag. And then now I've kind of used up all of my bits and pieces, which is telling me that these are the last pages to fill in. And so I decided to use this vintage doily as, I guess, a background for that little image that I really love. And so I just glued that down with my glue stick and then I glued that vintage invitation image straight on top of that, which I thought was really cute. And then I just took one of those labels with the red border and stuck that along the bottom. And now I'm just sort of looking through the pages and working out where I can add more or if I need to add anything else. So I have these little plate images. These were, this was from a 12 by 12 paper, again, an old Maggie Holmes paper. And ages ago, I cut them all out because I thought they would be cute little embellishments for clusters and stuff. But because this was a tea party, again, the plates were really, really perfect. So I'm trying to work out where I could put them. I thought maybe I could have them all around this page. So I'm just playing around with the layout. I felt like it looked a little bit busy all around the page and then I realized that um, it might look cute to have one on either side and then just have them sort of hanging along the edge of this page. And so now I'm just working out which order to put them in and I really like how that looks. So I put one of the bigger plates over on the cluster on the right and then I just used my stapler to attach the rest of the plates down the edge of this page. And before I did that, I made sure to look on the page behind and take out anything that was going to accidentally get stapled down where it shouldn't. And yeah, so I just kept the staples quite close to the edge of the page so that it wasn't going to interfere with the page behind it. And last of all, I'm taking out these sticker sheets. Again, these are Maggie Holmes sticker sheets. I love Maggie Holmes, I really do. She's one of my favorite designers. And I love, I really love these floral sort of border or like label kind of looking stickers because when you stick them down, they're, they're kind of transparent except for the black lines and it kind of looks like you've almost drawn it along the page. So I put one along the bottom of the page and one along the top. And I really like how that frames everything together. And then I used a bunch of the tiny word stickers on across through the whole spreads that I did. A lot of the phrases work really well for pretty much anything, especially if you have kids. I feel like there's lots of cutesy little phrases to do with family. And this whole sticker set is from, I think, the Heritage line, I think. Um, and yeah, so everything's really family related, which went really well with this as well. So I really like these tiny word stickers as well because they're, again, they're transparent, but you can see the black text and it almost looks like you've just written straight on top and I really like how they look. So I stuck some across all the photos pretty much and that just helps. I feel like it just helps to annotate everything. And you could, of course, just use a pen and write down your own phrases, but I personally, I always, feel like I mess my pages up when I try and write cute because I have 
sometimes terrible handwriting and I yeah I think if you've got the supply you may as well use it up so I could kind of go a little bit crazy with stickers sometimes but I have so many I may as well just use them and enjoy them so I put the two profile pictures there was like one of a young child and one of a, an adult female so I thought mother and daughter and I stuck them on the back of that coin envelope that I used for photos of me and my daughter and then on the last page I just added a few more of those little floral stickers and I feel like it just makes everything blend together it just fills in any little gaps that were left and yeah so that is the finished spread I had so much fun doing this journaling session I think I think these are some of my favorite pages that I've ever done I don't know it was just so fun to make it so like girly and pretty and it was just a really fun theme to pull together so obviously the party was fun <laughs> but the spread I feel like when you it's like when you have so much love in a memory when you do a journaling session it just like it just pours out into that and yeah I think that's why I love these pages so much because it was such a fresh memory and it was just like full of love moment that just came out in all the pages so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it for you. This journal with me was a little bit longer than usual, but I hope that's a good thing because I've been away for a little while. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you're all doing really, really well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.